Customers are streaming into the open-air restaurant, ready for a sumptuous meal. The employees are in for a long day. So we'll probably be pretty busy, um, but Saturday and Sunday are definitely pretty wild all day, right from the get-go. As soon as we open up, people are here and ordering oysters and so we have to close the gates at the end of the day. Perry Pearson strokes the fire and turns the oysters tactfully. Um, today we're serving sweet waters on the grill right here from Tamales Bay. So what we do is we shuck them, set them on the grill in the half shell, and then put a little bit of butter right on top and let them cook for three, five minutes maybe. At one end, a group of families on vacation from Nevada is having a picnic in the calming breeze. It is all chatter as they roast away. And we uh, stop off at Hog Island every year on our way down to Point Reyes Station. Why Hog Island? Because we love the oysters. Okay. And the wine. Yeah. And, the and the wine. And the cheese. So we eat them uh, raw and in, in, um, <laughs> barbecued. They're, they're good either way. You want to try one? <laughs> Thank you. You want one? <laughs> no? Well, that's a good solution. But beyond the thriving business, concern is rising over the future harvest of these oysters due to acidification of the seawater in the San Francisco Bay. According to oyster farmer Terry Sawyer, the coast of Marshall has been suffering the effect of acidification of the water. We're seeing the effects on this coast of lower pH and acidification of the water that is affecting the seed that's being uh, produced at these hatcheries. Ocean acidification results from increased carbon dioxide in the atmosphere driven by fossil fuels. They spills over into the ocean, making it acidic, thus lowering the pH. These conditions stunt the growth of oysters since they are not able to build their shells, let alone survive diseases, bacteria and viruses. Terry Sawyer is the owner of Hog Island Oyster Company in Marshall, California, and lives in constant fear of being forced to lay off staff because of dwindling populations of oysters. And if I can't get seed, because it's, it's uh, becoming increasingly difficult to grow that seed, then I can't grow, I can't plant the seed and I can't grow my business. Uh, and if anything, the inventory levels will be going down. And yeah, we would be at a point where we, we would have to lay off uh, employees and we would be less viable for, as a business. The mature oyster is produced by planting seeds. Seeds refer to baby oysters bought from hatcheries, which are cultured and harvested for the food consumption market. A decrease in the number of oyster seeds means farmers such as Terry Sawyer cannot sustain their business of supplying oysters to various outlets. We're, we're seeing it. We're actually seeing this. It's real. Terry represents many other farmers who are struggling to secure their business from the threat. Marine scientists are also conducting research geared towards saving the oyster. To ensure survival of the oysters, Terry Sawyer's farm in Point Reyes isolates the seed in a wet storage. When low pH is detected in water through monitoring, the pipes that supply seawater to the wet storage are turned off to avoid contaminating the wet storage. This process is known as buffering. When conditions improve, they let in the seawater again. Point Penolan, Richmond, and the whistling of the birds fills the air as the cold waters of the sea reflect in the sun. The tide is low and Christopher Lim inspects a man-made reef. He manages the Living Shoreline Project, which embarked on a journey six months ago to repopulate native oysters. 100 oyster reef balls were created using sand and cement and placed in the bay last November to offset this process. So we're going to be counting and measuring the oysters that have landed or recruited to our reef balls. So we would take a quadrat, it's basically a square, um, 10 millimeters, or sorry, 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters, and we would place it on the reef ball. Mm -hmm. And then in that square, we would count how many oysters we see, and then we'd measure the oysters. 
native oysters have been deprived of hard surfaces due to siltation on the bay. Thus, the move to offer the creatures a safe home, coupled with the school program on oyster awareness, are likely to impact positively the oyster sector. It builds awareness for what happened to oysters back in the day, and it builds awareness for how people are connected to oysters. The success of response efforts will be sweet music to the years of proprietors and farmers in the Bay Area because this means more oysters, thus more business. We like them raw and we like them barbecued, both. So we have 12 on the grill coming, and these 12 are here. And they'll be gone shortly. <laughs> You know, one of the unusual things about, about oysters is that it's something that you eat raw, you know, and alive. I mean, when you shuck them, they're alive. So, it's a very primal way of eating. You're not going to get anywhere with that. <laughs> you go the whole thing. I'm going to show you how to do this. Mm -hmm. So, what I do is I take the whole thing slurp and... Them. You're slurp them. Yeah. Down the hatch. Yeah. <laughs> no, I can't do that. Yeah, that's fine. Let me see. So it's my moment to eat uh, the oysters. Don't oyster. think about it too much. <laughs> yeah, just go love them. Yeah, thank you. Go for it. It's the living ocean. Yeah. Go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Rosalia Oponzo reporting. There you go. Let's go. Oh.